Hello and welcome to German Cinema Now, a monthly series highlighting the best and boldest in contemporary German and international film. German Cinema Now is presented by Good to Pop Up Seattle and Northwest Film Forum, and my name is Martin Schwartz. I'm the program curator of the Pop Up. Today, it is my honor and truly my pleasure to welcome Lilith Stangenberg. Lilith is an actor of tremendous accomplishment who indelibly played the role of Orfea in Love is a Dog from Hell, whose North American premiere we're celebrating today. Lilith, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. Um, there are many kinds of powerful performance, but by the end of this film, the viewer, or at least me, really feels, wow, she has been through a lot, um, emotionally, physically, and also as witness to so much strangeness and intensity. You sing, you dance, you saw apart animals, you crawl through dirt, uh, go mad with grief, reclaim your beloved. Um, can you tell us a bit about the experience of making the film? Was it more exhausting, more challenging than usual, or just another day at the office? Oh no, I remember when I arrived in Manila, I was kind of totally unprepared. I didn't really know what will happen. I think this is also part of how Carvin wants mm. to challenge people. He He's not talking a lot before, we, he didn't talk a lot to me before we started to shoot. And I remember my first shooting day, I, I got a schedule yeah. and it was written 6 a.m. to 6 a.m. Oh my God. <laughs> and I was totally sure, okay, that's just a mistake. It's of course 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Right. And then we started to shoot the, right the next morning. And um, of course I figured out during the day, oh no, it, it's seriously 6 a.m. to 6 a.m. <laughs> so actually he shot 24 hours a day. Wow. Um, with no rehearsal. Yeah. Just, as, he kind of built up a scene and then he just shot the scene. And yeah. often I didn't really know what I should do or wow. what's the scene about. Yeah. And he would usually just say, okay, you, you are your character and you do whatever. I want to yeah. tell you what to do. And first it was pretty, I was very desperate, of course, during yeah. the whole 24 hours. Yeah, yeah. We kept shooting like this for, for eight days. Yeah. So oh, my God. I think I had like two to four hours uh, sleep in between and then again 24 hours. But uh, I learned something very interesting. And that's that I myself as an actress, I have the full response. I have to take responsibility. Mm of what I do. Hmm. And there is no director who tells you what to think or what to feel or right. what to do, but it's me who, who has to take the responsibility. Yeah, um, it's a very intense way to learn that lesson, but uh, hopefully a worthwhile one. Um, so you, you, were you able to do any preparation at all? Did you, I mean, I'm sure you had an idea of what kind of role you were gonna play or you just kind of showed up and it happened? No, of course, there was something like a script, but yeah. it was more like a poem. So yeah. it was nine pages long because yeah. Hell has nine entrances. Okay, yeah. That's why he composed those nine songs from Hell. I see. And he composed them pretty early, I, uh, pretty fast, I mean, mm -hmm. like I, some kind, somehow like overnight there were these songs. Yeah. And I prepared them kind of alone. And I had a certain idea about those songs, mm -hmm. but then there was something else very funny. The first day I um, arrived in Manila, we went into a sound studio and mm -hmm. recorded all those songs. And I, the whole time we shot, I thought, okay, they will use the recorded version in the final film. Right. And so when we shot, I, um, I, I didn't have any music. Sometimes I had something like an earplug. Yeah, yeah. And there were some, but I always lost the connection. So I was super alone. Yeah. And I just sang the song the best or maybe yeah. the worst I could. I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> and when I first saw the film, I figured, wow, he just used the original right. material. He yeah. never used the recorded version. And of course, there's a certain beauty yes. about that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no. 
I mean, I felt very ashamed in the beginning. <laughs> Maybe it's kind of a good trick that he used in a way to get you to feel comfortable. And then, uh, but it's, it, it is really effective, I think. I mean, for me as a, as a viewer and a listener, because there's a lot of um, kind of rawness and vulnerability in the live, um, in the live uh, 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 renditions of those songs. Um, <laughs> One thing that is probably helpful for folks to know is that um, a lot of the a lot of this material was shot at the same time as the film Orfea, uh, co-directed by Kaben with Alexander Kluge, of which you were also the star. Um, and that film came out last year. We showed it here as well. Uh, this one is coming out now. Um, and to those of us who have seen both films, you know, for me, even though a lot of the footage was clearly shot at the same time, it reads as a totally different movie in Love is a Dog from Hell than in Orfea. Have you, have you seen both films now? Yeah, sure. And um, for me, Love is a Dog from Hell is the film actually yeah. I'm very proud about. Yeah, yeah. I think Orfea is also funny because it's an interesting answer to this movie culture we have where everything looks so good and is so well done and yeah. um i don't know there's something like i call it sometimes the dictatorship of good taste mm, yes yeah and i feel Ophir is not uninteresting because it makes everything wrong you know yeah. There's yeah. like it's it's kind of dada or yes a very surrealistic constellation yeah yeah, yeah. um but Love is a Dog from Hell for me is really something else. And yeah. I see it as a whole piece of art. Yeah. Like, even though it's not, it's absolutely not conventional and it breaks with so many rules of cinema. Yeah. yeah. It's very interesting to me. Absolutely. And for me, um, I was I was a lot more emotionally involved in Love is a Dog from Hell than from Orfea. It's a lot less for me intellectual. Uh and all of these things you talk about, Dada, you talk about this like this this conscious distance from good taste that is in Orfea, very interesting and very worthwhile. But uh, for me, Love is a Dog from Hell is like a really immersive, like emotional cinematic experience. Um, and it's also a really kind of legible telling of the Orpheus myth, so yeah. much more so than in than in um, than in Orfea. Did you talk about the myth a lot while you were while you were shooting? Actually not. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't talk. Uh, I don't know. Calvin had in this period he had something like a samurai, you know, like a warrior. He wouldn't yeah. talk a lot to me. So wow. I was. I mean, for me, filming is always some kind of process, like an endless process of daydreaming or mm. hallucinating. That's and if you film so intensely, like 24 hours a day, mm -hmm. you fall into a certain state beyond logic or yeah. Yeah. beyond rationality. Yeah. In a, it's, a, it's about delirium or even trance sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. And I felt, yeah, we wouldn't talk a lot. It was more like he pushed me into this overwhelming situation and I just gave everything I, mm. gave, I had yeah. but there's some point I thought it's very interesting what I didn't realize why we shot but I just saw it in the film I think it's a very lovely interpretation of life that Ophelia is looking for Eurydico like for 90 minutes everywhere not realizing that he is following her. Yes, yes, yeah. I think that's something I just saw. Yeah, yeah, saw. yeah. Um, it really, I mean, it answers a lot of my questions. Like, what is this, like, to what extent was it scripted? Sounds like a very small extent. Um, but clearly Kavan had a, had a plan, I guess, about what was going to be shot when and, and where. Um, and it was really underground. I guess Coven is really famous for making films with no, you know, on street level, no permits, just kind of showing up and doing it. Was it like that in this, in this, yeah. in this? Yeah. Yeah. Had you worked like that before? No, not in this hardcore. Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, the film is also a really intense experience of Coven's vision of Manila. Um, 
Had you been to Manila before? No. Yeah. Um, what What are your impressions of the city, as the in the way that he, that that Coven uses it for the film? Um, I mean, Manila is. There is one poet who who said Manila is the entrance of hell mm. to hell, and I can really understand that point yeah. because Manila and especially the parts where we shot in. Where yeah. I think usually as a tourist, yeah. as a white, white privileged uh, right. woman, you couldn't get, get into those slums. Yeah, yeah. So the parts where we shot in were like full of poverty and yeah. drugs and uh, dirt and people, they live on the garbage and full of those orphans and yeah. street kids and homeless people. And yeah. I mean, I was never before confronted like this with this phase of the world. Yeah. I felt Manila is like an open wound. Mm. Just laying there. It's so, so, so big. Yeah. And yeah. It, it really stinks often, yeah. it just stinks. There was one evening we, we shot already for 16 hours and I, um, I had a white, I had this white dress and yeah. Suddenly, a cockroach like this, like super big cockroach, yeah, yeah, came yeah. out of my dress. Uh. And I was so tired, and this freaked me out. And yeah, I, I collapsed. I kind of collapsed. <laughs> right. Ay, ay, ay. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, the, the, the notion of Manila as hell really comes through in the movie. Um, and also this, you know, being, seeing so much poverty and dirt and, you know, unhealthy surroundings, that really contributes to my view of, of your character as really just being um, kind of overwhelmed and ending up in a place with nothing, with nothing left to give. Um, it's a really moving performance. Uh, and yet you, um, you're you're now working I, on a, on another project with Kaben, isn't that right? I, we shot a film, and wow, I have to tell you this Please. because it happened from December to January. Yeah. we shot for for two weeks. Yeah, we shot on thirty five millimeters, so with very very old cameras. Right, a silent film, black and white. Yeah, we shot on um, footage with uh, I don't know the word like abgelaufenes footage. Um, yeah, it's like uh, uh, expired. Expired, exactly. Yeah. Expired footage. Yeah. yeah. Um. So the the image is very broken and very. Right. It has a very certain style, and for me, I I kind of felt, um, that this is the first movie I ever shot, wow. because I figured, you have. Uh, there was a very old guy who would take care of the camera mm -hmm. and he would um, always count the meters, the feet. Right, like right. Feet, 20 feet, 30, 40. Yeah. And so I kind of knew I have only 80 feet to deliver the scene. Right. And it was like, uh, you have to be so much on point and there's not this digital yeah. wasting of material, but yeah. it's... You have to with you have to deliver your emotions so precisely, and I kind of felt wow. <laughs> oh, what a beautiful that experience! The first time I shot something, and I saw the images, and it looks like a Carl Theodor Dreyer film or a yeah. Mono film yeah. combined with this super surrealistic fantasy of Carmen. Yeah, yeah. is I'm, it is it also? Um, is it shot? Is it also in set Manila? Yeah. No, it's more in the countryside. I see. Sambal is on on an island. Yeah. Very and lots of midgets and lots of uh, animals are. Wow. Part. All right. When when will this film come out? This we have to see. Uh, hopefully very soon because very me too. I'm very curious. Yeah. Well, I'll I'll ask Stefan to um send us a screener whenever it's available. Um. So I, I need not ask whether you would work with Kevin again, because I think he's he's directing you now in a, in a, in a, in a, a, a project at the Volksbühne in Berlin. Is that right? Yes, yeah, right. <laughs> How's it and, going? Oh, it's very intensely. I yeah. mean, the same madness and insanity he, yeah. he asks in his films. 
he breaks with kind of all rules for theater and yeah. it's it's overwhelming and I can imagine. it's a desperate kind of process <laughs> i'm sure it will yield something worth the madness um we only have a couple of minutes left but is there anything else that you'd want audiences in seattle to know about um about orfea or about mm -hmm. about about love is a dog from hell about your performances orfea Oh my God, <laughs> right now I feel it. I mean, I'm just, what I mentioned before, when I, I think it's also um, goes together with this um, overdose of streaming culture, like yes. Netflix stuff. And so, um, and even in Hollywood, what comes from Hollywood, I feel everything looks alike. Mm -hmm. Like most of the actors, um, the faces, the the scripts are very um, predictable, often. Yeah. and this and and, and for, especially from Hollywood, we see all those hero stories, like in, in the Marvel movies. And yeah, so yeah. I never knew when this started to interest the people so much. And what I like about Love Is a Dog from Hell that it's really a film about losing losing mm. control, losing love, losing life, losing everything. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I can imagine that maybe some people, they are maybe shocked or they cannot really uh, uh, understand these kind of images. But mm. for me, it's, it's a very important piece of yes. film work. Or for me too. And uh, I think that we need more unpredictable films about losing. And this has been certainly one of them. Um, Lilith Strangenberg, thank you so much for joining us uh, in the midst of the madness. And we are so happy to show this film and we're really happy to show the next. Look forward to it coming out. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.